it was Joshua Wong's third day in Berlin. He came to the German capital with a message for Angela Merkel and other world leaders. It's a must for the Chancellor pay attention to Hong Kong's protest and show the support to Hong Kong's democratization. Safeguard Hong Kong is not only the responsibility of Hong Kong people, but also the responsibility for world leaders prevent Hong Kong to face the next Tiananmen Square massacre happened three decades ago. On Monday, Wong met German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, prompting sharp criticism from Beijing. It summoned Germany's ambassador, accusing Berlin of interfering in China's affairs. YouTube channel, I don't care. But today, we do this on purpose. Okay? The police force in Hong Kong is completely under the command of the Chinese Communist Party. It's the tyranny, which is the existential risk of humanity. Understand this? Sorry? It's not just the bill. The bill has been withdrawn. Right, if you have not mistaken, but the thing is, Hong Kong has changed. Hong Kong, we are fighting for freedom and survival, okay? And the world should know, if Hong Kong falls, the whole world falls, okay? If Hong Kong falls, the whole world falls. Because the Chinese Communist Party is the existential risk of humanity, period. What? In the cells, Gulbahar says conditions were difficult, with a lack of basic hygiene, water and food. She also says she was subjected to brainwashing. They wanted her to give full allegiance to the Communist Party. Once a week, they showed us a video of Xi Jinping. Then, they told us to write assessments on ourselves. They wanted to make sure our ways of thinking changed and improved. Every Monday at 9.55, we had to stand up and sing the Chinese national anthem. For the rest of the week, we had to sing five songs every day. Oh, I've forgotten the rest. We sang this kind of song. If we didn't sing, they didn't give us any food. And then they punished us. Around a hundred camps are thought to have been established in western China. Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson. Thanks for joining us today. And joining me now is Gordon Chang, the author of The Coming Collapse of China. Gordon, uh, you're going to be debating Frank Holmes uh, coming up later in, in the program. You're going to be doing that. A lot of anticipation about that. We're going to be talking about your book, The Coming Collapse of China. Let's start there. That book was written in 2001, and it's now 2012, yet a lot of it still holds up. So looking back over the last 10 or 11 years, have events panned out the way that you thought they would? Well, in the book, I said that the Chinese political system and economy would fail within a decade. So that's 2011. I'm about a you know, couple of months out of time. <laughs> But what we're seeing right now is a real change in the Chinese economy, um, and it's a fundamental change, where we had this super cycle upward for about 35 years, uh, virtually uninterrupted growth, and now what we're starting to see is the downturn. In the book, I said that there were a number of changes in China that were really beyond the ability of the Communist Party to deal with, and part of it was trade. It's the entry into the World Trade Organization, which would cause changes. So you still believe that... China is going to collapse. You still see the end. But when do you see that happening? And what do you see will be the, the key events that will make that happen? I sort of see this in, in this year or next year, very, very soon. So you still believe that China is going to collapse. You still see the end. But 
When do you see that happening? In, in this year or next year, very, very soon. Obviously, the Hong Kong chief executive, Carrie Lam, uh, she reversed that extradition order. She didn't end it, just suspended it. So it's possible it could come back. The Chinese wanted, to, presumably, to clear that, but they haven't dumped her. What are we to make of that? Well, I can't dump her right now, Neil. I mean, but the c issue is, is she going to be around six months from now? And most people in Hong Kong believe she will go because there is view across the political spectrum that she is no longer viable as the chief executive of Hong Kong. And you can sort of understand why, because she has created one public relations disaster after another, and she's responsible for these enormous crowds that are hitting the streets of Hong Kong. But, you know, China right now has an economy which is crumbling, could even have been contracting last month. We saw that with bellwether car sales down 16.4 percent, the 11th straight month of decline, the worst monthly decline ever. And imports were down uh, down 8.5 percent year on year, a real indication of declining domestic demand. This is an economy that is in severe trouble. They need the U.S. market desperately right now, Neil. But, you know, you know China very, very well, and you know its history going back 30-plus years to Tiananmen Square. Um, it, it's always in the eye of the beholder. And I'm wondering whether people are getting ahead of themselves. Yeah, all that Beijing did by suspending consideration of the extradition bill is to pause. They didn't withdraw it, as you pointed out. And until there's a withdrawal and until there is the resignation of Carrie Lam as chief executive, I actually think that this is just a tactical retreat, not a significant movement on the part of Beijing. They'll be back, but I don't think they can win this. There are just too many people on the streets. All right, Gordon, always good catching up with you, my friend. I appreciate it. Gordon Chang, best-selling author, Thanks, the, Neil. the best expert I know on China and that region. Hey, Gordon Chang, best-selling author, Thanks, the, Neil. the best expert I know on China and that region. Gordon, I know the people who disagree with you will say you've been saying this for years and years. Eventually you'll be right, but you haven't been right so far. Why now use the word crash? Are we really there? What we see right now is, of course, these liquidity crises causing confidence problems. You've got debt issues, and with a slowing economy, as we've seen from the HSBC PMI and even the official PMI, it shows that they will not be able to pay back this debt. So I think the fuse has been lit. I don't think there's anything that they can really do right now because of global conditions. Foreigners are not going to be pouring money into China, and that really means that the Chinese economy is going to fail on its own. It'll go into recession. This, is, this played out in the United States in 2007, 2008. We had a liquidity crisis, then we had a credit crunch, and then we had the recession. So if this happens in China, I would imagine the problem for us in the United States is they can no longer purchase our debt, or would they continue to buy our debt? Well, you know, they haven't really been buying debt for the last seven quarters. You have to go back to June, uh, July 2011. Um, their official holdings of U.S. Treasuries was $1.3 trillion. Has it it's, grown? It's, it's the same now. So essentially they have not been buying our debt. And there's